All right, cool stuff. And we got sound, and we're all good. But we got a tangled chord. All right, so what I have here, ladies and gentlemen, is f of x equals negative x squared plus 2x plus 5. All right? There you go. OK, so remember, the first step we always want to do is make sure it's in our quadratic form, which are the definition of our quadratic, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. Right? So this is in that form. We're good. The next thing we want to do is make sure our a is going to be 1. Here, we have a as a negative 1. So I have to factor that out. When I factor that out, if I have my squared and my um, linear term, I want to factor it out of both of those terms. I'm, I prefer just to factor out of these two terms. All right. So when I factor that out, I'm now left with a negative 1, or you can just do the negative. Right? Negative. Now I have x squared minus 2x plus 5. Okay. Now the way I was explaining it this before, so now all I did was I factored a negative 1 out of those first two terms. All right. So what we're going to do is for this binomial, we are going to create a perfect square trinomial. Does anybody recognize perfect square trinomial? Let's just go through it again, right? because I think it's important for you guys to understand what perfect square trinomials are. I'll just give you guys two good examples, x squared plus 10x plus 25. All right? These are two perfect square trinomials. Why are they perfect square trinomials? Well, if you practice factoring them, this comes into x plus 5 times x plus 5. Right? 5 times 5 is 25. 5 plus 5 is 10. This one is x plus 2 times x plus 2. Right? Well, what you notice is this is the same thing multiplied by itself. So we can just rewrite it as x plus 2 squared, x plus 5 squared. That's why it's so important to have a perfect square trinomial, because we can rewrite it, we can factor it as x plus 5 squared. Or we can write it as a binomial squared. Got it? OK. So that's why we want to get a perfect square trinomial. So now, once we first have it in quadratic form, then we factor out so we have a 1 as our a. Now I need to make this binomial create this to be a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to create a perfect square trinomial. So rather than always thinking, you know, what, how would it be, there's a very easy process. And that process is to take negative 2 divided by b, take b divided by 2, and square it. So for this problem, our b is negative 2 negative 2 divided by 2 squared. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1, right? So what I do is rewrite it now x squared minus 2x plus 1. I have now created a perfect square trinomial. That is a perfect square trinomial. Okay? That's what the b over 2 squared did to me. I created that perfect square trinomial. But remember, if I'm going to add one, this is, uh, this is a problem. So if I add one, now I'm going to subtract one, and then plus 5. But here's, again, we need to remember, here's where a lot of mistakes came in. Since I'm multiplying this positive 1 by negative 1, that's really a negative 1. So I need to make sure I multiply by this negative sign to this negative 1. So I multiply negative 1 again. Therefore, now I can rewrite this. Remember perfect square trinomials? We can rewrite as a binomial squared. So equals negative x minus 1 squared. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Plus 5 is 6. Yes? What if you just rewrite the negative and the 5 also? Well, the thing, that's why I factor, that's why so I just. It's different ways to solve it. That's why I prefer just to solve it with here so you don't have to deal with that. Because that's your k, and you can just leave it, leave it there. Um, so, then what's, um, so then what you have is now it's in vertex form, which our vertex form is f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k, where your vertex is equal to h comma k. Notice that the vertex is the opposite sign here. So my vertex which you should have got, is going to equal 1 comma 6. Right? It's the opposite sign of what's in your standard form. If it's x minus h, it's going to be h. Got it? Cool? Then the next step is to solve. 
So to solve, we're going to make sure we have f of x, which is our output, we're going to set equal to 0. So I have negative x minus 1 squared plus 6. Subtract the 6 on both sides. So I get negative 6 equals negative x minus 1 squared. Then I got to get rid of the negative 1. So I divide by negative 1 on both sides. And I get positive 6 equals x minus 1 squared. Now I undo the squaring function. So I square root, and I get square root of 6 equals x minus 1. The other mistake a lot of students made is to remember that when you have uh, square root of 6 equals x minus 1, make sure that uh, you take in the plus and minus of the square root of 6. So my final answer is going to be x equals, I add the 1 to the other side, 1 plus or minus square root of 6. And that's your final answer, x-intercepts vertex. Okay? Perfect timing.